We are at the treehouse today to style this beautiful bookcase. And our audience is very split. Half of them feel like they should just be beautiful and half of them feel like they should only be functional. Right, and I think they should be beautiful, functional, and sentimental. Yes, so watch this video because we're gonna show you how to make them beautiful, functional, and sentimental. It can be very overwhelming if you have a lot of bookshelves. Like, where do you start? If you have a lot of space. Yeah. Right. And I like to start in one section okay. and see how that feels and then move to the next section. Okay. I also like to break it down in a rainbow. Right now, when you're looking at this open space, you like to think about potentially the pinks and yellows, the greens and the darks being so you don't mix it in. You like to do I'll section I'll mix it in a little bit. Okay. Just so it's not so That's obvious. That's interesting. Okay but it's a subtle kind of vibe that flows. that flows. Okay. The subtle consistency that moves from one side to the next. Yes. You know, it's funny. When I started thinking about these shelves, I actually didn't want any more yellow in this room. Okay. And so I pulled- Well, it's not a lot of yellow. Let's it's not, not a lot. But I just, I didn't like it being introduced more in here. Okay. So there's only a little bit. I really focused on the blues coming through. Okay. We have a pink table in the room. So we have a little bit more pink that's coming through and then just anchored on some of the neutrals. And But how is this art, if it is at all, how is it affecting how you move forward with styling the shelves? So I look for objects or art or things that I already own that pull from these colors. Okay, so it is influencing you and you're, yeah, okay. Yeah, definitely. What's the first thing you think about? The big items, the small items, mm -hmm. or the color? Well, I think about, okay, here's a shelf. We wanna create zones within this shelf. Okay. So I wanna look for three or four sections of items. Okay. And I wanna think about height and variation. And so some of the items that we're breaking it up into that we've talked about before, books. plants, books, yep. objects, and what? What's Art. the fourth? Art. Yeah. Okay. To really create interest is I'll have some books that lay horizontally and then I have some books that come. Stand vertically. Thank you. Yeah. This is a lot of bookcase and it took a lot of time and thought behind how to curate it. And so I just started going shopping, like vintage shopping. This I had in a closet that I never put anywhere. This did I you found. Did you make that? No. Oh, somebody did. I bought did. it. Oh, yeah. okay. You paid money for that. I did. Great. <laughs> <laughs> what are all the random things that you have that could maybe go in the color palette, pull them all out, put them all over the floor, see what you're working with, start there, and then and then start to put things up on the shelves to see how they work. So like for me, I would look across the floor and I would immediately go to maybe larger pieces or definitely sentimental pieces. Like pieces that I knew, I definitely want that on my bookshelf. Books, you can feather in and do your color coding and do your you know, vertical and horizontal, but like for me, the way my brain would work is I would look for pieces I definitely don't want to live without mm -hmm. or larger pieces. Is that something that you would do? Definitely, but sometimes you'll find that the sentimental pieces maybe aren't framed how you want them or the colors aren't or quite working. Or they're super working. small. And so we, yeah. can, we can look at those, see if they work, and if they do, great. We'll use okay. them. If not, we can consider how we can repurpose them okay. or maybe put them somewhere else in the home. Like stand back, this huge mess, where does your eye go right away that you're like, oh yeah. my God, I wanna start with this. So let's start on the right side of the bookcase okay. and we'll work from there. Okay. So I usually start with books that I use a lot, putting them somewhere where they're easy to grab. So a little bit lower and keeping these upper shelves for more of your display. This is the weirdest thing ever. This is a cat tree of all of the cats that my dad owned. And it's so weird that I love the quirkiness and sentimental value of it. So it's going on display. You know, we like to mix up vertical books with horizontal books. And I also just love to have moments where the colorways are similar. So here we're gonna do kind of a blue-green colorway. These bookends I found at West Hall when I was like, you know, 25 years old. They're really, really beautiful. Here I'm gonna work on either three zones or four zones. So I'm gonna get everything up and then see what we need to do to balance it out. I also love to take pieces that are textured, like this is a woven cactus, and I just stuck it in like an actual planter bottom. Super weird and funky, but I like it. My kids love it. Here's a vintage picture of my mom and my aunt. So we're gonna push everything down just a little bit just to give it some breathing space. 
So I went and bought a few new books for these shelves that were really beautiful. And then I went and thrifted most of the rest. And I just looked for spines that had the color that I was looking to pair it with. So again, we love sentimental pieces. This was my, my dad was a cyclist and he's now passed away. And so I want to feature his bike saddle. Is that what it is? Saddle? Bike seat. And I love the, the texture of the leather. The other thing that I like to do is angle pieces. So here you can see this frame is angled this way and this frame is angled this way. It creates a moment. And this saddle goes into the next bookshelf, kind of takes your eye to the next place. Here, you know, we just have them straight on. It's okay, not everything has to turn, but here you can see why, you know, this moment's kind of coming together with those frames being angled. This painting I found on a trip to New Zealand and it just doesn't really fit on the wall in this room. I was thinking I'll have it lower on this bookcase and I often with art will center it on one of the panels in the cabinetry. So here I'll just make sure it's centered right there and then I'll put some things around it. One thing that I have a hard time spending money on are bookends because I could spend so much money on bookends because I have a lot of bookshelves. And so I often will take a plant and just stick it on the end because I really love plants. I love how much life they bring to a room. And so I'll just use those to anchor the books so they don't fall. Picture of my dad riding his bike. This little painting I found at a thrift store. I just thought it was really cute. My friend's dad makes these felt animals. I just think they're so fun. Again, they add texture and they're just an interesting talking point. Like if you have people over, they're like, what is that? And you're like, I don't know, it's just cool. And my kids love these little felt fish. Down below, we put things that we use, like these books. We have all of these family memory books that the kids like to take, but also things that the kids can play with that you don't mind having on display. So this I look at as like kind of a working shelf. And then we start to get more into the display as we go up. I love pieces that my kids have made. They're just so funky and weird, but they love it. We know when their art is displayed and it's a fun talking point. So I'm not quite sure yet what to do with this corner because I want it to really, it's, it's the last place that your eye is going to see when you're looking at this bookcase. So I want to make sure it really works with everything once we get it up. So I'm going to wait on that and I'm going to move up here to the next bookshelf. So here's another example of taking a newer book and pairing it with an old book. If you have a small frame, it's nice to stack books when you put it on top, because if not, look what happens. It just gets a little lost, and then you have all of this space above it. It's cool, because it, that's a good idea, because it raises a small frame, and you still right, want to Right, because if it. you don't put it up here, you have all of this unused space. Right. But I really like this frame, and I like the size of it, but look at how what that yeah. does. It creates this moment for it to live in. Well, even if you didn't have a taller frame, though, like you don't, yeah. you know, it's like a good way to get that mm -hmm. raised up just yeah. to stack it on books. People don't think of that. So here's another sentimental piece. Again, something I would never buy, but my stepmom owned this oh, and cool. she loved it. She called it the poop owl. She is So that's a good example well. of like a sculpture. It's something that your eye can be curious about. Like yeah. it's not just books and frames, you know? Right, and what we talk about is creating that variation of height. So here you start low, you go high, you go low, you go high, you go low, right. oh, go okay. high. Yeah. Here, you know, low to high and then to high. So now we need to come down okay. and find something low here. A lot of times people think that they need to make this book, you know, level. And I like how you did kind of a waterfall. And yeah, you, and oftentimes I actually don't. I was just going to say, you, that, yeah. you normally have no, up, down, I up, don't. down. Yeah, but I'll I like show those you. Colors. I mean, as we finish this, like, I'll, it'll be a variation, but I might come back and decide I don't like that now that yeah. you pointed it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, normally you do. <laughs> So here we'll go with something a little bit shorter, not too much, but just to bring your eye back down. So now we really need to make sure that this is low. The other thing I'll do is I'll make sure that these zones are lining up. So here you can see this lines up. Oh, that's a good tip. This really isn't. So I'm gonna move that over. And then I want this one to go above these. This subtle See, now that's a that real make surprise. a huge impact. Because I would think that you would wanna go every other. Space. 
empty fill, so it's more like this, but actually the objects are different enough that them mm -hmm. lining up mm -hmm. kind of organizes. That's interesting, I never knew that. With bookshelves, it really just depends on what your objects are. Right. And once you get them up, you can see what you prefer. Like we could move it around and see, okay, do we like that breaking up that space? And we like this one here. See, I just, I feel like that's not finished because I need something that comes even lower. Well, try to find something that comes lower and then see how you would adjust. Yeah. Oh, you're already doing it. Yeah, because I'm You already know. I want, again, the vertical and the horizontal to complement each other. Right. Just like we have here. We have the vertical with the horizontal. So now we're gonna do horizontal with vertical. Another example of when we use a planter as a bookend versus an actual bookend, if you want some life that comes with it. What's going on there? I don't like my cactus. Well, it's okay. It's, it's sentimental. Good. Not really. I just wanted the texture. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Like yeah, the, so like that's the glossy, like really, yep. really shiny with the... See, this stuff felt so hard. <laughs> There's a lot to think about. <laughs> There's a lot to think Texture, about. Texture. Color. Sheen. Okay, so now, Teal, I need you to hop on here and I'm gonna hand you books. Earlier we talked about how more functionally used books you'd put lower. And if they're truly not working with your color scheme, whatever. I mean, either you decide you don't want to use them or you decide you want to put your ugly books in the shelf below. I am choosing in the treehouse living room to have it be more aesthetically pleasing versus functional because we have other places in the home where we can store functional use books, like our nightstands, the kitchen. dining room, kitchen. Yeah. We even have all the storage down here. So, you know, my tip is if you don't have as much space and you want it to be more functional, just try ripping that cover off to see if the spine is a, is of interest or just mix it with some other books that are of the color scheme and it'll start to fade away the ones that don't work in your color palette. So we need to end this chapter of our blue stories. This is our blue green story. Okay. And I like to turn it just like we talked about earlier with these picture frames turning in to tell the story and talk to each other, we're gonna turn this book in just ever so slightly to finish this look. Okay. But we're gonna wait on this side because I don't want it to be too obvious that this is our blue-green uh -huh. bookcase story. And so I wanna tie whatever happens down here in with what we're doing over here. Here we have horizontal vertical book. books. So I wanna do a horizontal right here just to see what that will do for us. Maybe we can do this guy over here. I love this. This is a planter, yes. but I just think that it's so much fun that I like it being up here. So those two look the same size to me, and mm -hmm. so it's interesting, but one's a sculpture and one's a plant, and that's why they work together next to each other, right? Yeah, they're very different. These are pretty heavy objects all together, but let's see, let's see how they start to work. I love this bowl. So fun. It just has that subtle pop of orange in our color story that you can't even really see unless you're really tall. Sometimes I break my own rules. I have something in mind, like variation of height, just so it's not so repetitive. Right. And it's so planned. So here, you know, it's something we wouldn't normally suggest, but I like it because it, it's just different. You see a lot of these curated moments. Right, right. Over right, here. Yeah. And here you start to see like three objects that are larger and they're singular. But just, sometimes I'll do that just to make it look not so planned. I got it. That made sense. These are fun, these are from Etsy. Those are really cool. I think I'm gonna do tall on the left, short on the right. Sometimes I'll stagger them. So because these are three singular heavy objects up here, I now wanna break it apart with another curated moment down here. So again, we talk about those angles. You have this frame angling this way, this frame angling this way, this one is straight on to create that complete moment. Ooh, I like that a lot. That's a good tip. I don't want it centered under the spotlight when we have all this empty space. So I'm gonna move it just ever so slightly. And this other little funky thing. So small and smaller. Yep. Cluster, little. Cluster next to each yeah. other. And let's finish this side and then we'll see what we need to fill in with. So one thing I'm noticing is this is a little bit fuller mm -hmm. and this is a little bit open. Is that obviously intentional to 
Yeah, I'd like to create some breathing space. So, you know, here you see your eye can breathe when you come up. Yeah. And then I wanna leave this clean um, so your eye can breathe and, and let the painting have this moment. And now I wanna start clustering more books up here. And then we can really see like, is this working or is it not? Here we're gonna start the other side of the rainbow and it's really not a rainbow that makes any sense. We're gonna start with brown. Okay. <laughs> Good. What do you think? Great. Okay. Clean. I think we need one more object up here. So I want to play around. What do you think about, you know, a tree or something that comes up here to give it more height? We could put it straight on and then have everything else to the left. What do we think? Too messy? No, I like it. So now we have this corner down here that we need to finish and I really want it to look complete. And so I'm going to take the colors that we used over here, the pinks and the oranges and the purples, and I'm going to bring them down to this corner to finish it off. And again, you know, my trick is to angle them in to really make it feel inviting and bring those angles towards the center of the bookcase. And then I feel like we need a plant, a draping plant. I love draping plants. And actually I'd probably put one over there too, if I could, but and there we are. Sometimes you'll find to elevate the look of your bookcase is by creating a thread that connects the spaces. Yeah, so in this instance, we we bought this series of books that we knew would spread across the top shelf. And represent the different colorways. Yep. yep, and then we invested in these frames that are all different sizes that also spread throughout the bookcase just to tie it all together. Right. Thank you so much for coming with us today to style bookcases. We hope you learned something new. Yes, I learned lots of helpful tips. I, my eye is moving around the bookcases tremendously. Follow, share, like, comment, subscribe. Link. Love it all. See you next time. Thank you. I met someone the other day who didn't know the difference between vertical and horizontal. Who was it? It was you.